Check out the chop. Trooper's Day isn't always that exciting or dangerous, but when it is, a trooper is prepared to put his life on the line. In Alabama, the Department of Public Safety works 24 hours a day to improve the quality of your life. Alabama State Troopers want you to feel safe at all times. Safe in your neighborhoods, safe when you're out shopping, and safe when you're out just having fun. By working in conjunction with the county sheriffs and the city police departments, they give Alabama citizens and visitors the best protection available. Troopers are especially concerned with safety on the highway. A reckless motorist is a hazard to other motorists as well as a hazard to himself. The 55 mile per hour speed limit saves lives. When a trooper pulls a driver over for speeding, he could be preventing a serious accident. Troopers are always on the lookout for the driver under the influence. Sometimes it's alcohol, sometimes it's drugs, sometimes it's lack of sleep, sometimes it's just carelessness. May I see your driver's license, sir? Yes, sir. Officer, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I just can't seem to keep my eyes open. Did you take any of those this morning? Yes, I, I took a few of them. But that's, that's for my sinuses. There's a warning on the package that says you, that you shouldn't drive because these cold tablets can cause drowsiness. There's a welcome center just up the road here. I'll take you there so you can call someone to come get you. Whatever the reason, Thank you, sir. carelessness, drugs, alcohol, if a person is out of control, there'll be a trooper looking out for him to get him off the road. Uh -huh. Will you be uh -huh. I surely will. Thank you, trooper. When Alabama began experiencing an alarming increase in truck-related fatalities, state troopers began a concentrated effort toward enforcement of truck-related violations. Trucks are routinely weighed and checked for faulty equipment that could cause an accident. After your license, please, sir. As in the majority of cases, these responsible carriers comply with all the safety specifications and are on their way in a matter of minutes. Vehicles that shouldn't be on the road are just as much a hazard as a drunk driver. Tail lights being out, brakes that don't work, can all cause accidents. Traffic violations cause accidents, and accidents cause deaths. This is especially true when vehicles travel the state highways at excessive speeds with disregard to safety laws. It's important for state troopers to enforce the traffic safety laws, but the manner in which it's done is also important. The trooper must be able to assess the situation, obtain whatever assistance necessary, 
Render aid, control traffic, investigate the accidents, clear the road, and in some instances, he must notify the relatives or friends of the accident's victims. When the highway patrol was formed in 1935, Governor Bibb Graves and Chief Walter McAdory began a tradition of conduct that still exists. Troopers face very complex problems today. Maintaining law and order during strike action when it's a trooper's duty to restrain and control and to protect the rights and property of both sides. In this instance, ensuring the motorist an uninterrupted supply of fuel or maintaining law and order during a civil disturbance. A trooper's responsibility is to protect and serve the public. During civil unrest, angry feelings between different groups can cause a danger for all citizens. Troopers respond to natural disasters. Before Hurricane Frederick, more than 200 troopers were assigned to the coastal area to protect property and provide aid. Residents were encouraged to leave the island for safety while troopers lashed down their command post to secure it against gale force winds. We plan to set up roadblocks. These are the critical areas where we still have debris across the roads. We've got a roadblock set up there. From the command post, troopers helped victims of the hurricane and coordinated rescue efforts. They were joined in their efforts by top officials from the state and the National Guard. After the Five Mile Bridge was destroyed by the hurricane, the National Guard assisted troopers by airlifting patrol cars to Dauphin Island for patrol duty. As a public service, troopers routinely make kidney, eye, and blood runs. Transporting needed items by the troopers is often the fastest way to deliver them to the hospital in need when minutes could determine the patient's fate. Assistance for stranded motorists is also a daily part of state troopers' public service program. Troopers are often called in to assist with disasters, manhunts, and rescues. G6 eight is the question. Uh, we're en route to DeSoto Falls to assist in the search. Yeah, four, three, six, eight. Raise it on the line. The line is the highway. G6 eight is the question. Uh, we finally got him located in the water below DeSoto Falls. I took a comrade with me and advises he can perform the rescue with assistance from National Guard Sky Cream. You can see, but it works for you and me. Lays it on the line, on the line, he's your friend and mine, on the line, yes he lays it on, on the Sometimes when the officers are called, it's too late. Who found the body? She did earlier How long ago did you find it? Troopers at the scene of a crime will call in expert help. In this case, an Alabama Bureau of Investigation agent and a latent print technician will assist in the investigation. Fingerprints are the most positive form of identification. Over 16,000 prints go on file each month. This man was at your party. Why don't any of you know him? He showed up with some other guys. Once you left, Whipple's acting a little crazy. 
what were these men doing at your party? Some of the guys bought some grass from them, and they just kind of crashed the party. Drug traffic in Alabama affects everyone. Citizens who say they don't use it and don't know anyone who does can still be affected. When a young woman who could be a relative or friend is murdered, it's every citizen's concern. Are you going to be able to make an ID? I hope so. There's a good partial print on the necklace. And Alabama has four latent print technicians. Many cases are solved through these files and the expertise of these technicians. We need some information on this man, and we want him on suspicion of rape and murder. I've seen this dude around. He hangs around with a big-time dealer. He's no pothead himself, but he uses the hard stuff, heroin and cocaine. There'll be some drugs coming in in a few days, but we don't know exactly where. As soon as they get here, this junkie and his friend will be on the street. We hope to get some information from DEA or Customs. Let's hope we'll get some type of a lead. In Alabama, the Elks Association, the Department of Education, and the Department of Public Safety have pooled resources to establish a statewide toll-free number to be used anonymously to report illegal drug activity. Citizens can help, and you never know when your information will help put a pusher in his proper place. Jail. There are over three and one half million drivers' records on file in the driver record unit. The records show accidents and driving violations. A cross-check with the ABI identification unit will give all criminal records. Yes, here he is. Five years ago, he was arrested for suspicion of stolen vehicle. K-110, my on U.S. 85 miles east of the mall. I'll assist K-215 with a running roadblock. This is Fred Barnes, suspect in our murder case. He's gone underground now, but he's got to come out for drugs. Narcotics unit is following some smugglers now. Maybe they'll come out when they make their drop. Very good. Bill, how about bringing the group up to date? Yes, sir. The same subject was involved in the same kind of auto theft operation a few years ago. No convictions, but the M.O. was the same. Drivers lease the cars out of state, drive them to Alabama, get a title, and sell them through newspaper ads. Excuse me, Major Mellon. Communications has taken a secret witness call on a voting mobile bag. He'll call back in a few minutes on another line. Very good. Lieutenant Payne, go down to headquarters communications check on the call. Lieutenant Payne, this is the call you needed. This is Lieutenant Payne, may I help you? Okay, could you give me your location, please? It's been here for a couple days. Okay. Could you give me the description on the boat? State troopers use all the latest technology in criminal investigations. All law enforcement agencies share information and work together when investigations require cooperation. They keep in mind, it's not only important to catch the criminal, it is also important to convict the criminal. This is an enlarged photograph of the print off the necklace. And this is an enlarged photograph of the right thumb print of Fred Barnes can positively identify him as having touched the necklace. That's great. That's wonderful. All we've got to do now is find him. Right. A murder investigation ties in with a state narcotic investigation. Cross-checking with the Federal Drug Enforcement Agency reveals that the boat in question is under their surveillance. Yeah. Customs reported the boat came through the Yucatan Pass about four days ago. We're about some mobile bay. Okay, one mile offshore. All right, we'll be rolling. We'll be there in a few minutes. 
U.S. Customs has also been monitoring the activities of this boat and reports that the boat was observed leaving South America five days earlier. Customs, B-276. I-340. I-340, go ahead, B-276. The boat's moving into shore. We believe it's still loaded. I-340 to Mobile. Go ahead, I-340. Fire's headquarters. Brazil's going down. I-340 advises Brazil's going down. Headquarters advises. Let them make a move. They went going. That's time for them, old man. Look at my car! How could you do this to me? Why were you following so close? Let's see, driver. My yeah. husband's going to kill me. Look, lady. He bought this car two days ago, sir. I told you my insurance will take care of it. Sir, did you see the wreck? No, sir. It already happened before I got here. I noticed the guy was hurt, and I thought I'd stop to see if I could help. Wow. Give me a break. Give me a break, lady. How could you do this? You stopped right in front of me. Driver's license division. Can I assist you? Yeah, if you'll help me with the traffic, I'll try to get the wreck work. Okay. How could he do this to me? Look at my Calm car. Down. I hope there's there anything else I could do. No, sir. I sure do appreciate you stopping. Thank you, and I'll be getting on the road. Both of you have a seat in your car, and I'll check on the record. Remember, the cell numbers have been altered on this vehicle. The lady said she just bought it. Have an all the investigator meet me here. Boat's coming into the dock. Boat's being met by two men in a black Torino. Stand by for tag. B-boy, yeah, with T-Tom, 039. Tag is B Boy E Edward T Tom 039 Alabama tag. We're in position and ready to take over whenever you're ready. show you some pictures to look at. You said you were going to have this gag today. Yeah, but it's not. Did you bring, did you bring any pills? No, I had 
Suspect now entering the restaurant. All units on detail meeting the rear parking lot. Once a crime has been committed, there is very little a trooper can do for the victim or the victim's family. Troopers know this better than anyone. And that's why they instigate new traffic safety and crime prevention programs every year. That's why they go into the community to speak at schools. They encourage drivers to make sure their vehicle is running properly stressing the danger of being stalled on the highway. And that's why troopers stress the importance of citizen involvement to civic and business groups. Drug smuggling and drug pushing is big business in Alabama as elsewhere across the nation. With this in mind, we have implemented the Help Eliminate Lawbreaking Pushers. This is known as the HELP program. And we ask anyone who has information concerning any drug activity, to call our statewide watch line number, 1-800-392-8011. Your call could start the investigation. This is Aaron Noah. We have a poster over here at the airport that these drug people put out. And there's an aircraft that come in here and gassed up and paid cash for it and pulled out the end of the runway. And he's been sitting there for about an hour like he's waiting on something. Huntsville, all special detail units, they're headed to the airport, KRB 513. Troopers are special people. They consider it part of their duty to lay their lives on the line to enforce the law. It wasn't too long ago that this young trooper attended the department's criminal justice training center at Craigfield in Selma, Alabama. Law enforcement agencies statewide use the training center to prepare their officers for duty. Recruits and cadets live on the campus in modern dormitories and facilities. Recruits and cadets make use of all the facilities at the center during their training. Just the bench press is one to keep both feet firmly on the ground. A special course has been constructed. 
for pursuit driving practice, where recruits can gain valuable experience in controlling vehicles at high speeds. There's a feeling of excitement and energy at the training academy in Selma. Recruits and cadets alike push themselves to the limit, both physically and mentally. The officer in charge of the training center is Captain L. N. Hagen. As law enforcement becomes more sophisticated, so must our training. While you're here, you'll be taught accident investigation. One of the most important things that you'll do at an accident scene is determine minimum speed from skid marks. Fingerprint theory, forensic science, psychology, how to handle hazardous materials, bombs, and explosives. There are just so many ways you can hide a bomb. I mean, anytime you work with explosives, if you don't know what you're doing, leave it alone. Leave it for the bomb squad. You have to turn these First aid and, and all the things that a trooper will encounter while he's on duty. Crime is different today. So these young men and women must be exposed to all the theory they can handle. They are given a course on the pharmacology of drugs because there are more and more drug-related crimes being committed. We have between three and 400 airstrips in Alabama. They are taught the psychology of law enforcement. How do you control an angry group while providing protection for everyone involved? How do you give guidance and moral support when people have been flooded out of their homes by a hurricane? Physical training at the academy is very important. It can save a trooper's life, or it can save your life, or the life of someone you love. Alabama's own Sergeant Jim Collins, two-time National Police Combat Pistol Champion, and other instructors and members of the pistol team provide expertise and training on the firing range. Every officer hopes he never has to use his firearm, but if the need arises, the trooper's training ensures his competence. Our training is extensive and thorough, and it is our intention to be the number one state police force in the nation. The trooper's knowledge, integrity, and sometimes even his own life depends on his ability while he's on the line. Since the force began, more than 20 troopers have lost their lives in the line of duty. It takes dedicated individuals to make it through the course. The Department of Public Safety is concerned with your safety. Troopers work hard at what they know best to make the highway safe, to control drug traffic, to prevent crime, and to encourage safety. So wave to a trooper when you see him. He's out there every day on the line looking out for us. G129. There's a long blue line in the state of Alabama, and it stands for justice and the law. There's a long blue line in the state of Alabama. To the line will come the men who be the call. Life of dedication and protection of the rights of fellow men. And any traveler who is stranded is always glad to welcome him. 
And in his line of duty, when danger comes into his life, his job comes in front of his home, his children, and his wife. There's a long blue line in the state of Alabama, and it stands for justice and the law. There's a long blue line in the state of Alabama. To the line will come the men to be the call. Pretty fair. You're a couple of minutes early. Yeah, a little. What's going on? Not much. Been pretty quiet. He's got traffic at the game today. Good. Maybe I'll see Dan. He's working sports day. That brother of yours is doing okay. Seems like I see his byline almost every day. Yeah, but I don't think it'll last. He says he wants to come to State Trooper. How about that? He should make a good trip. I think so, too. Well, better get moving. Brother can track the detail. Looks like a pretty routine check. Let's hope so. I'll see you later. Right. State Trooper, Sergeant Smelly. Routine? Sometimes it's true, but not often. Raymond Collins is a trooper with the Alabama Department of Public Safety. From the beautiful mountain lake country in the north to the rolling hills and rich farmland of central Alabama to the sunny, semi-tropical Gulf Coast, it's the job of men like Ray Collins to protect the safety of hundreds of thousands of motorists who travel the roads and highways of Alabama each year. This won't be an ordinary day for Ray Collins. It's going to be a very special day for a lot of people. Edward Bordson is a good example of a careful, responsible motorist. He and his wife, Eva, are on their way to see their favorite nephew quarterback the big game today. Ed has no reason to believe he might be involved with the Alabama State Troopers today. Now here is a good looking group. Nothing like a couple of Bloody Marys in the morning to get a glow on for the game this afternoon. Yes, it's going to be an important day for young Larry and his friends, and for Karen too. She's been around quite a bit for a girl of 16. Hitchhiking home for Christmas is fun and cheap. And of course, you meet a lot of interesting people that way. Dan Collins, Ray's kid brother, is getting an early start this morning. He's a newspaper reporter and he likes his job. But Dan has made an important decision to become one of the men in the long blue line, an Alabama state trooper. Anyone who wants to be a trooper must be at least 21 years old, have at least a high school education, pass strict physical and intelligence tests, and, of course, be of good moral character. Get your bags and the training back. starts at the Alabama Police Academy. All state trooper recruits go through at least 15 weeks of intensive training. They get a lot of classroom work. Then they put it into practice. Every recruit learns how to handle a patrol car under hazardous conditions, like it's a part of him. Starting position, two, ready, exercise. A tough physical fitness program keeps every man in top shape. He learns how to defend himself. He masters the service revolver, hoping he'll never have to use it. Later, he'll train with the shotgun a weapon used only for defensive purposes and then only in the most crucial situations. You, the trooper, will see the people that we need to see, but you're the man that investigates... The Accident investigation is a big part of his training, so he learns how to use the necessary equipment effectively and accurately.
learns how to control and put out fire. And, if he'd have gone into heart and how to give emergency medical service to the injured. Heart failure. In this process, you will only locate the little bony structure. A lot of the recruits' time is spent in the classroom. Gentlemen, our next speaker on the subject of teamwork, leadership, and motivation will be Coach Paul Bear Bryant of the University of Alabama. Gentlemen, I'm delighted to be here with you because I have great respect for you. And uh, I also feel like that we have a lot in common. I think, first of all, when a player comes to be a football player or a coach or whatnot connected with it, that first thing he should have is to be really want to be good at it. And I don't think you know, that'll happen by chance either. He learns to operate the photoelectric intoximeter, an important tool in detecting the most dangerous of drivers, those people who had one too many for the road. There are several things you should know about the video camera. Modern audio-visual equipment is used to help him understand how to apply his training to real-life situations. The recruit also gets specialized training, like this exercise in riot control, and learning how to work quickly and efficiently in the event of disaster, such as a flood or hurricane, often working from this self-contained mobile command post. If he decides to join a tactical unit, this repelling exercise will give him the skill to get into otherwise unaccessible areas. Or he may work with the Alabama Bureau of Investigation, another division of the Department of Public Safety. This time we'll have Trooper Hartzog with his presentations on police communications. He learns to communicate with people, to let the public know that state troopers are there to help and to serve. Things that we've learned during this recruit school is how important it is for each one of us to be able to communicate with the public and with each other. We must let the motoring public know. As a trooper, he may later become active in safety education and public relations sharing his knowledge and experience about the importance of traffic safety with groups and organizations throughout the state. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a type of accident that we wish to eliminate on the highways of Alabama. The Alabama state troopers work around the clock in an effort Alabama's to... law enforcement reference library is a source of valuable, up-to-date information for agencies throughout the state. The weeks of training pass pretty fast. And ladies and gentlemen, May I, in conclusion, say how delighted, just plain delighted, I have to have been with you here today and also to be with our the governor, Governor George Wallace. And may I wish you every success uh, in your future endeavors, and God bless you all. Thank you very much. This time, I would like to call on the Honorable George C. Wallace to present the certificates to the graduating class. We will start with Trooper Henry Hartzog. Trooper, congratulations, Thank fellas. You. Good luck to you. Trooper Thomas, in the state of Alabama, there's a man who stands above the rest. He is trained in a school to protect you at his best so be proud when you see him there's a long thin line that really rates he's an alabama trooper your neighbor and protector of your state there's a long blue line in the state of alabama and it stands for justice and the law there's a long blue line in the state of Alabama. To the line will come the men to be So far, as expected, the morning has been routine for Ray. The tough, never-ending job of the trooper is traffic law enforcement. 
This guy seems to be in quite a hurry. Maybe to kill himself and others. Nasty temper, too. But raised calm and courteous. Y'all stop me every time I get out on the road. I think you just look for me. A citation for speeding might help this driver remember to keep a lighter foot on the accelerator. Well, I've been out here on the road working all week long. Actually, much of a trooper's time is involved with helping motorists in trouble. Administering driver's license examinations. Checking and weighing trucks on the highway. If a truck is overweight, it is not only a safety hazard, but will cause expensive damage to the highways and roads of our state. In this case, everything is okay, and the trucker is on his way trouble-free. Then, of course, there's traffic control in a variety of situations, like today's big football game. It's still a little early, but when the Crimson Tide takes on an important rival, like the War Eagles, Ray knows he's in for a busy afternoon, handling a capacity crowd. These young people are in high spirits, literally. The couple of Bloody Marys have multiplied. Yeah, I guess it's time we should be getting dressed. Yeah, you two don't take all day to get dressed either. I don't get smart. Yeah, we got plenty of time. Yeah, time for another refill. Yeah, old buddy, maybe it'll be that ball for me. You two are gonna be in great shape for the game. Right, we're in training. Here, kid. Okay, okay, we're going. Right? A lot of people are planning a good time today. But Karen here, she just wants a ride. Well, maybe Karen's luck is changing. Oh, there, little lady, hop in. How far are you going? That depends on you now, doesn't it, huh? I don't think so. I think I'll wait. I think we're going to go a long way. Oh, help! 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 How about you, Smokey? You got a copy on this 18 winner? This old Smokey, come on. This is Avondale Driver. Got the handle of a bartender. We got a guy here on old lady eastbound abducting a young girl. That's 10 4. Can you give me about a 20? He's about two miles out of Middle Lane. Can you give me a description? He weighs about 250 pounds. He's about six foot four. How about the girl? Can you got a description there? She's red headed. She's got long red hair. She's got a headband. She's got on blue jeans. She's got a blanket roll on her back. That's 10-4, Avondale. I'll get this to the station. Be 1084. We go. Way down. G-120 to Montgomery. G-120, go ahead. Avondale Mills truck reports a possible abduction of a white female near Middle East on US 80 East. The subject's driving a 1969 Chrysler. Dark blue in color. The tag number is 19-3809. The car's being driven by a white male, approximately 6'4". 30 to 35 years old, weight approximately 250 pounds. Can you copy a description of the female? A fan's all go ahead. The people at headquarters move quickly into action. While patrol units speed toward the scene, the license number and description of the automobile is fed into this computer, which is directly connected to the Alabama Crime Information Center and NCIC in Washington. The computer has the information in seconds. The car is stolen driver wanted for armed robbery in another state. The information immediately goes out to the field. All units are notified, including helicopter troopers, who coordinate the pursuit from the air. Air 3 to Montgomery. Air 3, go ahead. Uh, Roger, Montgomery, it's Air 3. I have the car spotted. It's headed east on US 80. Air 3 advised that he has spotted his vehicle approximately two miles east of Montgomery on 80 East. 
That's 10-4. I'm 1079, 10 100 a Advise the units to set up a roadblock at I-85 and U.S. 80. There's a long blue line in the state of Alabama, and it stands for justice and the law. There's a long blue line in the state of Alabama, to the line where come the men to be To his life of dedication and protection of the rights of fellow men. And any traveler who is stranded is always glad to welcome him. And in his line of duty, danger comes into his life. His job comes in front of his home, his children, and his wife. Okay, it looks like he's going to his old shack on top of the hill. Y'all come on this way. Let's go. Keep your hands on the back of your head and don't move. It's over. And so is Karen's hitchhiking adventure. State troopers will see that she gets safely home for the holidays. There's a different kind of excitement at the ball game. Team's winning and everybody's having a good time. Here you go. Thanks. Well, I need a cup of coffee. Shouldn't you be in the press box? Well, I got what I came after, just a couple of interviews. The game's almost over anyway. I can get a tape of the play-by-play. -play. Good game, sounds like. Yep, might be a close one, though. Hey, Ray. Yeah? I made the big move today. Oh, really? Yep, my application's in for the academy. No kidding, hey, that's terrific. You gonna be here much longer? Oh, I don't know. What? I thought you for Ray and Dan, the day so far has been routine. That's going to change pretty soon now. Losing it up. If we don't hurry, we're going to be late. We got the grilling to ride here. There'll be an important change in plans for these young people, too. So we'll get started later. We don't hurry, we're going to miss that, too. Oh, I guess she's right. We better get going. What about the bottle? I'll get it. Yeah. But we better wait till we get the game. Hey, if you're going to take the vodka, I might as well take the next. <laughs>
been a good day for the Bordsons. Their nephew threw two touchdown passes, and they'll take it easy on the way home. Y'all know I drive better after I had a couple drinks. Well, good to go eat. Sounds good. Where are we going? I thought we'd run down to Brian's. They have good food down there. Ah, oh, that's good. Montgomery, G1, 29. G129, US 31 South Road. G129, have a port of a 1050 PI, possible F-type, US 31 in Southwood County 4. 21052, 1084. Advise on 1023 on 1054. Uh, Tempo, you advise uh, 1050, 31 South, possible fatality. Tempo? Tempo, G129. Advise 1024, 1084. What's going on? We got a bad accident down on 31. Possible fatalities in it. Have you ever been to a bad accident where they had possible fatalities? No, all I've ever been around is fender benders. Well, this is going to be a new experience for you. Then. This is the way it happened. We hear about it, we read about it, we even see pictures of it. But somehow, we can seldom see ourselves as part of a scene like this. Ray can, too often. It's part of his job, the investigation of a fatal accident. He'll see tragedy like this throughout his career, but he never gets used to it. Here's Larry the guy who could drive even better after a few belts. He'll live, but he might not want to, because two of his friends are dead, and another very seriously injured. The Bortons had no reason to think they wouldn't arrive home safely. He was a careful driver, never even had a speeding ticket. Now his wife is dead, and he is badly injured. Ray's job doesn't stop with the accident investigation. Later, it's up to him to try to explain the unexplainable to grief-stricken relatives and friends, people who probably never thought such a senseless accident could happen to someone close to them. I'm Chaplain Williams, the minister here at the hospital. Well, uh, I'm an We're sorry to have to inform you Ms. Williams' sister died as a result of the accident. <sighs> Service to the trooper. Thank you, Trooper Dollar. Charles, sit back now. Okay, guess that's all we can do here. You still want to be a trooper? Yes, it's rough sometimes. As an Alabama state trooper, Ray Collins has to deal with tragedy and death on the highways and a lot of routine, hard work. Why does he do it? He knows he's a valuable member of the community and he's one of the men in the long blue line because he cares. There's a long blue line in the state of Alabama and it stands for justice and the law. There's a long blue line in the state of Alabama. Oh, I got it, G129. 
mind talking about that, do you? You want a life of dedication and protection of the rights of fellow men. And any traveler who is stranded is always glad to welcome him. And in his line of duty, danger comes into his life. His job comes in front of his home, his children, and his wife. There's a long blue line in the state of Alabama, and it stands for justice and the law. There's a long blue line in the state of Alabama. Through the line will come the men to heed the call. In the state of Alabama, there's a man that stands above the rest. He is trained in a school, taught to protect you at his best. So be proud when you see him. There's a long, thin line that really rates. He's an Alabama trooper, neighbor and protector of your state. This is Bobby Goldsboro reminding you to drive carefully. It's up to you to live and let live. Thank you.